Module 5 is all about thinking like a lawyer. And this is something that goes beyond just learning legal knowledge or legal skills and how to do something. It's about um, understanding the way to approach problems, the way to, to work in practice. It's what the sociologist Boisdieu calls the feel for the game. It's all very well to understand the rules of a game and to understand what you need to do in a game, but until you actually get in the game and you start playing the game, it's, uh, it's, you don't actually really get that sense, that feel for the game. Okay, so the first chapter in the readings this week really talks about um, the way in which logic and logical forms of thinking affect um, legal reasoning. And we don't really expect you to um, memorise all those different categories, but we're using that as a framework to work through to understand how legal reasoning works and to give us some way of describing or discussing the kinds of logic we're talking about and particularly the logical fallacies. They're very interesting and they're very useful and they're also very useful in winning arguments outside of your study. So this is a good um, step on the path to becoming um, good at winning arguments if nothing else. Um, these are also key parts of your toolkit and that's the next assessment item that's coming up is thinking about that toolkit and understanding how that toolkit operates. So there's something to really think about when you're looking at the material for this week. Um, what, what, what are the basic tools you're getting here and what, how are these going to be useful when I come to write my second assignment, which is putting together that basic toolkit. Um, in this chapter and in the other chapter as well, we also look at legal theory. And sometimes people balk a little bit at theory because it all seems very theoretical and very abstract. But the way I see theory, and I think you find theory becomes useful as you think about theory uh, theories as tools. You look at a problem, you try and figure out what it is and you can actually bring a theory in and the theory may or may not help and if it helps it'll actually help you solve that problem. If it doesn't, try a different one, try a different tool. So think, think about those theories in a practical sense. Now the second um, part of the readings this week talks about realism and it spends a lot of time talking about the legal theory um, of realism or legal realism. Now that's very useful and um, you know I have a lot of time for legal realists but I don't think it's quite what we're talking about here. Um, I think the chapter may be a tiny bit off point um, when we're talking about the capacity of legal professionals to work um, in a way that's realistic. Particularly when we're talking about um, the stresses and the well-being of individuals. Real, real legalism is more about your sense of self-awareness, your ability to understand your own work practices, your own capabilities, and not overextending yourself. Now, of course, we don't know what our capabilities are until we test ourselves. So it's um, being realistic is not about not being tested. It's not about not doing difficult things. And in fact, when it comes to learning, the proximal zone of learning where we learn the most is when we are put to task, when we're, when we're facing something that is difficult, not impossible, but is difficult. And we learn as much by approaching a problem and failing to approach it, learning from that and, 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 and starting again, as we do by just marching up to a problem and solving it straight away. Um, and this all, of course, t ties into the idea of resilience, and that's something that employers are looking for more and more these days, they're focusing really on employees who are resilient, who have the personal skills to be able to work in difficult situations. And I mean, not unreasonable situations, but just situations that are difficult. And they have enough um, self-awareness um, to be able to understand what's going on in their own heads and to be able to moderate that. Um, there's a little bit in the in the resilience discourse. Um, it's a little bit of like you know back in my day, sort of the old guys talking about how young people today have no resilience. But there are parts of it that are that are quite um, important as well. I mean, uh, there was one of those apocryphal um, studies recently of um, high school students, which found a very worrying trend that high school students tended to believe that if you weren't good at something first time round. Um, you weren't ever going to improve, that there was no point in practice. You were either great at something or you weren't. Um, I don't know whether these are kids brought up on the Harry Potter books and believe that you should just have like all your magical abilities laid at your feet. But the world doesn't work that way. Um, everything that's worth doing, everything that's worth striving for is difficult. And you're only going to get better by doing things that are difficult. 
And we use that as a, a real a guiding principle when we put the law curriculum together. It's not there to make it something that's easy for you just to walk through. It's there to test you, and by testing you, for you to be able to evaluate your own strengths and to be able to build on those things and learn. So we're not doing it because we're being sadistic. We're doing it because that's how you learn. Um, think about if you were learning the guitar and all you did was play Mary Had a Little Lamb over and over and over again. It'd be easy to do. Um, I think I possibly could even do that, and I'm terrible. Um, but you're not going to learn anything, and you're not going to, and you're perfecting something which is pointless and simple once you've done it once. So getting back to that point of, of, of realism, being realistic is a very complicated mixture of things, but it is about having that ability to self-reflect and to be able to see when you are being pushed. I mean, we mentioned this um, earlier in the semester, but the assumption is that for every subject you're studying, you're spending eight hours reading, studying, working on assignments. You're working a 30-hour week. So if you are saying, if you, and, and, and a bit of, of, of realism is about not deluding yourself, if you're saying, I'm working really hard, and then you add up all the hours last week that you spent on your study, and you find that they are under 30 hours, you're not working really hard. You might get through, you know, you, you might be able to cut corners and get through, but don't fool yourself and tell everyone you're, you're really stressed out and you're working hard unless you're working that full week. And, I mean, one final comment on the point of stress is being stressed um, is, doesn't help anyone. It's not productive. Running around telling one, everyone how stressed you are, um, talking about how stressed you are, completely non-productive. I mean, as, as Yoda says, there is, there is no try, there is just do or don't do. And there certainly is no try and stress and then complain and then tell everyone else. Um, you waste so much energy stressing, obsessing, getting onto Facebook, telling everyone how stressed you are, ringing up everyone, I'm so stressed today. I'm not denying that stress doesn't affect people and it's very important in terms of loyal well-being that we recognise the importance of stress. But there's a difference between feeling stress and managing stress and being stressed. And quite often we get very addicted to being stressed and telling ourselves, telling everyone else how stressed we are, instead of actually doing the thing that you need to do to stop that stress stressing you. So I'll leave you with that thought for this week.